when I got pitched the, the story of like, you're going to be on an oil rig in the 1970s with no opportunity to kind of like contact the mainland or all of that, I was like, I want to play it, but if I can participate to create it, that's even better. My background is in level design. And the reason why uh, Still Wakes the Deep excited me so much was because it is essentially one big game level. So the way we started making the Bay OD is literally blocking things out in the editor and seeing how big things turned out to be. And we started quickly to find out that we needed quite a large old rig for our game to make it work as a playable area. Rob like, basically just gave me the <laughs> controller and said, okay, play play the game and like uh, see what you feel. One innovation that we made was a piece of feedback from our creative director, John McCormack, where he encouraged us to put in lighting into our levels, into our block out levels that were similar to what we intended in the final game. This is because when you're in the dark, you, you see the environment differently, you pick out different things, you pick out uh, the contrast between depths rather than forms in the environment. It's really important to play the game even at a blockout stage in the same way that the player will experience it. Thankfully, there are some huge structures in the North Sea that we could take inspiration from. So we were looking at even um, archives of blueprints of oil rigs and things. We were looking at how they're constructed, the types of oil rigs, like semi-submersibles and tension leg platforms and things like that. Another thing we tried to play a lot on the level design side was to uh, have more destruction happening the more you go through scenes uh, in the game. And that means that some area that you already have seen is now blocked, but some other areas that you could have uh, gone through uh, in the uh, early scenes are now open. As the game progresses, we really want the player to experience a transformation in the play space so they could return to areas that they'd previously been in. They could see that what was previously a very human place, like a canteen or a, um, a crew lounge, would, when you return to it, have elements of horror, have elements of change. When you do have an environment that is used multiple times at multiple time periods, it becomes very, very difficult to make modifications to that environment because you then have to change the level in three different states. So something even as simple as, as moving a piece of furniture would take multiple iterations and a lot of work to get right. For example, we've got uh, several scenes where you go down the legs of the rig into the pontoons under the waves. And we thought that was an incredible thing to be in these kind of submarine structures that, with the waves beating above uh, and you're very alone down there. That pulls into so many horror signifies. But there's like a, a sense of like, I don't know, everything feels big and you feel so small and like you could slip up and fall like at any minute. There's like a lot of different fear that we were able to use, like for example, the claustrophobia. We like, for example, at one point we are like stuck into a pipe maze with something that is going around you and kind of like chasing you. That idea of all these different horror things of, of isolation, of um, sub-mechanophobia and thalassophobia mm -hmm. and things like that. And we really wanted you to feel like you were Kaz McCleary in the North Sea. What, what I like about Kaz is that he feels like a real character. He's like a middle-aged man in his 40s. He's not that athletic anymore. Uh, he's swearing a lot, but at the same time it makes sense because everything around him is crazy and it, it always feels weird to me when in games the, the character don't react or don't have a voice, it kind of like breaks the immersion for me. Whereas Kaz, like all these reactions feel real and feel like what I would do in, in, in his situation. It's exceptionally hard to make a horror game because you, you're so into it all the time. You're so aware of the clockwork that makes it all happen that you sometimes forget that there is horror there. And so experiences that we were quite blasé about, we would send those off to internal and external playtesters. And in some cases, they'd, they'd be recording themselves on a webcam. There was one moment we, we got one of these playthroughs back and they just stopped playing and put their heads in their hands <laughs> and just had to take a few minutes because they were so freaked out, which was a, a wonderful moment. That's where you know you're getting the horror right. When I see people talking about uh, their wishes for a game with a brave narrative uh, that, is, that believes in itself, I want them to feel like this is that game, something that is a, an experience that they will never forget.